Welcome to another episode of the Amateur Machine Shop. In this episode I tackle a vise that keeps lifting apart when the vise jaws are tightened. Before being able to mill the Stirling engine parts accurately, I need to improve my vise. The vise jaw has a gap of 9 thousandths of an inch between the vise jaw and the base. This gap causes lift every time a part is clamped. Let's start with the disassembly of the vise. Removing the end cap first allows the Acme thread to be removed. This allows the vise jaw assembly to slide off the end. Next, the Acme nut block is removed by loosening a large hex nut underneath the vise. There are many sharp edges on this vise. I use a file to deburr many of them. This will save a few fingers and knuckle cuts in the future. Using a sharp blade edge, all the paint was scraped off the top flat surfaces. This will be important for the later setup. The grinding quality of this imported vise leaves much to be desired. The marks show the grind wheel was dull and heating up the cast iron. To machine apart accurately, the table of the mill needs to be clean and burr free. Here I show all the steps from brushing, wiping and using a hard stone to remove any burrs. If the table is oily, using lacquer thinner with a rag helps to remove it. The video has been sped up two times. I wanted to show the process of the setup. Nothing can be machined without a good setup and it all takes time. Many people have no idea how time consuming this can be based on the complexity of the part. I have cleaned many tables over the years and mostly it's an easy task. However, if the table has something dropped on it or a scratch, the time is needed to file or stone the area to a level surface. The vise jaw sits flat and doesn't rock back and forth. Setups are boring to watch and I will not always show the detail. For those who are learning, I hope it helps to understand some of the basics. To determine how much to mill away on the vise jaw, the gib on the vise base needed to be measured. Measured a couple of the areas on both sides and it was fairly accurate. Also had to measure the vise jaw areas to understand how much material needed to be milled off. Next, I tightened the clamps and started to indicate the top surfaces. It is very evident the vise jaw isn't sitting flat. Poor machining from the factory. I checked both sides to ensure the part is flat. Since the surface was off by 15 thousandths of an inch, added two 15 thou shims to both ends and reclamped. After adding the shims, the indicator on the surface showed the part was within one thousandths of an inch. Next up I started milling the lowest surfaces first. Once these areas are flat, I know the end mill will remove material on the other surfaces. Watch your end mill. Parts clamped often have interference. Look away once and you may have a broken tool. With the lower surfaces completed, commenced on milling the other surfaces. The measurement of the step between the two surfaces is 591 thou, 591 thousandths of an inch. Before the vise is reassembled, all the holes are chamfered, threads chased, and cleaned out with hair.
All parts were cleaned and the bird, then started the process of assembly. Now a 1000 shim doesn't slide between the vise and the gib. With an indicator mounted, cannot get more than 1000th of an inch deflection applying pressure up and down. The vise now holds parts without lifting them, allowing me to now start accurately machining parts. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.